Hey guys, what is up? Greg here on the Vinyl Rundown. Busy, busy weekend here in Los Angeles. All, all kinds of music going on. Uh, let me just try to get through some of the stuff that I've been up to this weekend. Uh, gotta get a video out because I did such a music-filled weekend. I was at the uh, audio show. The, uh, what do you call it? The show. Home Entertainment Show in Long Beach. Friday and Saturday. I probably listened to a million dollars worth of stereo equipment like high-end stuff mostly I'm gonna do two or three videos about all the stuff I saw and heard and all the people I met at that show and let's see some of the cool people I met let's see real quick I met two great youtubers are we in focus here guys I guess we're are we going autofocus today hold on hold on I hope it's in focus Joe and Tell, you guys should uh, follow him on YouTube. If you're all at interested, if you're interested in all at, uh, am I saying that right? If you're at all interested in audio equipment, speakers, budget speakers, I'm going to do a video, more information on Joe and Tell, spend some time with him. And another dude, I'm trying to cover up the uh, phone numbers and home addresses. Techno Dad. He's got like 48,000 followers on YouTube. Uh, anyway, I'll do more, more videos on the audio show in Long Beach. And then after the audio show, I found a record store in Long Beach. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Just a little bit about the records I got at this other cool store. And then today, I just got back from this concert just you know a few minutes ago. A Queen cover band right down the street at, at the park called Queen Nation. I just uploaded a video on those guys. I got up real close with my nice camera and microphone and recorded three or four songs of those guys. I put one on YouTube so far. So take a look for that if you like Queen. Queen Nation. The singer they have, Greg Finsley, uh, he is, is freaking amazing. You think you are watching Freddie Mercury. The behavior, the mannerism, the singing, the piano playing, the whole persona, stage presence. This guy, he's way better at Freddie Mercury than Malik, what's his name, from the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. But because of the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, they're just, they're taking off. They got concerts night after night. They're doing Santa Fe, Vegas, L.A., San Francisco, four days in a row this week. So if they come to your town, check out Queen Nation, check out their website to see what their uh, dates are. Uh, oh, so sitting in front of us at this concert was, uh, happened to be the drummer from Alice Cooper and uh, Hollywood Vampires. And this guy is getting all kinds of attention as some super duper, very fast, you know, very talented uh, technical drummer. I don't know. I haven't heard, I don't think I've heard his stuff, but... How did I know that? Well, his dad, you know, older than me, is sitting in front of us. And he just kind of comes up to us. He's like, he sees my shirt. He goes, oh, Fender, are you into guitar playing? Check this out. Do you know who this is? I'm like, uh, is that your son? Yeah, you know who he is? Who we play? I'm like, no. Okay. Alice Cooper. Okay, cool. That's your typical L.A., you know. There's musicians and famous people all around. Similar story. The guy went to, uh, I'm going to get to records in a few minutes, guys. Real soon, I got four records to show you. Promise. The guy I went to the audio show lives right up the street. Um, he played drums a long time ago, but he just told me that living across the street from him, you know, it's like eight houses down. But I, I only know my neighbors next door. I don't know anybody in this neighborhood. Across the street from him is one of the original members of the Suite. Do you guys remember them? Uh, kind of one of the biggest glam rock bands of the 70s. I was into them when I was in fourth grade. Ballroom Blitz, Fox on the Run, Love is Like Oxygen. They, they're still performing, believe it or not. But so, the guy's been my neighbor for eight years, and now he's moving out this weekend, so I'll never get to meet him. Just weird, uh, weird days of LA rock and roll. Okay, so. At the home entertainment show, the audio show, um, they had one floor, floor number two, which was a lot of records, record dealers, used records, 
really expensive new records, super high-end audiophile stuff. I tried my best to get some records there and I just really couldn't find anything that uh, I wanted to get. So, since I was in Long Beach, I knew Long Beach had some cool record stores, so on my way home I stopped at a really cool sto store called Fingerprints. I forgot to bring the business card. Anyway, Fingerprints Records on 4th Street and East Street, downtown Long Beach. Very cool store. Really like this store. Really vibrant. A lot of young people in there shopping and working there. Records, CDs, DVDs, books, next to a hipster coffee shop. Really uh, better than any local record store I have right up here in uh, this part of Los Angeles. Anyway, one of these crowded downtown places, I had an hour on the meter, I had to shop in an hour. And I hate shopping for records when I'm in a hurry, because I make bad decisions. Or I go too fast and I miss stuff, and I couldn't get on my uh, uh, cellular, you know, I couldn't get into my discogs. But I knew my wife had this on her want list. Do you guys use the want list function on discogs? Basically, I got 3,000 records on that thing but another 30, 40 records that my wife and I have put on our want list. So, birthday present, Christmas, Father's Day, easy gift. Go on Discogs, search the want list, hit buy, done. You're shopping like without getting your lazy butt out of the couch. So I knew this record was on there. And okay, I'll, I'll be nice and buy my wife something. The Surf Punks from the 80s, I guess. What year is this? I can't read it, guys. It's 77. My wife was a surfer in, in her day. She was an L.A. beautiful bikini surfer. She used to cut class and go surfing. We're talking late 70s. And this was the surf punks, kind of a surf, a surf punk band. Can you believe it? Um, so I bring it home. Honey, got you a present. You paid how much? You paid $10. It's more than $10 paid more than ten dollars. Well, it's on your want list. I thought you wanted it. Yeah, but I thought you got it for like two dollars. Well, I'm not happy that I spent ten dollars. It's kind of a stupid record. Uh, it's got, they, they had a song on the radio called Shark Attack, which is a very stupid song. Shark Attack, Shark Attack, two chords back and forth. Shark Attack, Shark Attack. Um, but, in case you don't know the surf punks, this dude with the hair, what is his name? Dennis Dragon. He has a famous brother named Daryl. Daryl Dragon was a, made a little more money in the music business because he was the captain in Captain Tennille. Daryl Dragon's brother is the captain from the Captain and Tennille who was very successful and Dennis Dragon, I don't know what the heck he's doing. Anyway, it's got some, they used to play these songs on the radio when I was in t high school. My Beach, My Wave, The Surfmen, Punch Out at Malibu, Surfer's Nightmare, Can't Get a Tan, Teenage Girls, Letter from Hawaii. They got a bunch of girls on the back, but they're not even in bikinis. Like, what, you know, what are you guys thinking? Trying to sell records? So then I, I spent most of the time in the jazz section. This was in the new arrivals section, and that's always a good place to start because there's stuff that hasn't been picked over yet, and the good stuff is there, so whatever, surf punks. So I spent most of my time in the jazz section there, and uh, I ended up with three records on ECM, which is strange. They're cheap, $6.99, dollars uh, They're not as clean as I would expect ECM stuff, but let me go through them. Terry Riptal, is it Terja or is it Terry? I think it's Terry Riptal. Kind of a weird avant-garde, wacky guitar player, but a lot of his music is sort of uh, ethereal, ephemeral, spacey. And this is no different. Um, John Christensen on pe uh, percussion. I've heard of him. Otherwise, guys with long names I can't pronounce from Oslo. 1974. Terry Riptle, Whenever I Seem to Be Far Away. Kind of a typical ECM release from the 70s. And I got two more on ECM. Let's go to the early one. You guys recognize these people? You should if you like jazz. I can see them from here looking in the camera. John Abercrombie with a tie on, Jack DeJanet, 
with a Hawaiian shirt on. Uh, is that Eddie Gomez with the leather jacket? And who's left? Lester Bowie plays a horn, plays trumpet. So this is a Jack Dejanet record, Jack Dejanet New Directions band. Jack Dejanet, one of the best drummers in modern fusion jazz. These are all Jack, Jack Dejanet songs for the most part. ECM 1978, eight or nine bucks. Why not? And similar record, John Abercrombie on guitar. Who else is on here? Peter Erskine. Peter Erskine and Jack Dejanet are like my famous favorite drummers from this sort of modern ECM era. And I've seen Peter Erskine, and I've seen John Abercrombie, but I haven't seen uh, Michael Brecker. No, I've seen all these people. You guys care who I've seen? This is a much later record, 80s, 88. John Abercrombie called Getting There. So, again, typical ECM sound. Spacey, experimental, unusual jazz. Who's on here? Song-wise, John Abercrombie wrote most of the songs. Vince Mendoza wrote a song. Mark Johnson, great bass player. I think he played with Bill Evans. The end of Bill Evans' life, and they played with... Uh, did he play with Pat Metheny? I don't know. Peter Erskine, you know, the drummer from Weather Report. The hairiest man in show business. Michael Brecker, great tenor saxophone player who died a few years ago of some weird cancer. John Abercrombie also died a few years ago. Uh, I saw John Abercrombie twice. Uh, first time I saw him was a great story. The Blue Note Club in New York. I was staying at a hotel in uh, Times Square for business. And I looked it up in jazz clubs. Okay, the Blue Note right down the street, a block from the hotel. John Abercrombie, one of my like top ten favorite guitar players. So, uh, was this thing out of focus the whole time, guys? I'm having a problem figuring out autofocus versus manual focus. John Abercrombie saw him play at the Blue Note, and I was by myself just sitting there digging the music. And the maitre d' came, out, came up to me at the end and said, uh, you can stay for the second set, because I was obviously enjoying the music. I was by myself, so I didn't have a lot going on after the show. So it was very cool that uh, I got to see John Abercrombie. Two sets in a row, New York City. This would have been like 2003 or four, And then I've seen him in L.A. All right, guys. Fingerprints Records, very cool record store, downtown Long Beach. And uh, I'm going to have more information for you on the Home Entertainment Show. Please check out my video that I just uploaded on Queen Nation live show doing the favorite Don't Stop Me Now. Got up real close to the, to the stage. Took some nice video. Of course, I was moving around, so you might get ill. You might get car sick. Motion sickness. Uh, sorry for this disjointed last minute video. I wanted to get something out this weekend to you guys, but I had a mega music weekend. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon.